Next, let's work on the third issue, artifact assignment. We're going to assign an artifact to a wizard. Before we go to IntelliJ, let me show you the relation between the two entity types, artifact and wizard. So let's take a look at the PowerPoint. This diagram describes the relation between the two types, artifact and wizard. The notation I used here is called UML class diagram. There are two classes, artifact and wizard. The line in between is called association. The numbers on each end is called multiplicity. So this is the meaning of this diagram. An instance of artifact is associated with zero or one wizard. That means an artifact can have no owner or up to one owner. The other direction, an instance of wizard class can have either zero or more artifacts. Next, based on this UML class diagram, let's implement this in IntelliJ. Okay, let's work on issue three, artifact assignment. So first, let's create a branch. First, let's modify our domain models because we have to implement this one-to-many relation. Under domain package. So let's first, let's modify artifact. Then we'll go to wizard. Besides the four private properties, ID, name, description, image, URL, an artifact belongs to up to one wizard. So here, we're going to define a fifth private field. Let's call it private wizard owner. And remember, this owner can be null. Next, let's add an annotation to it. If you remember that in Hibernate, in this case, we should add at many to one. Because one owner can have many artifacts. So that's why we use this annotation at many to one. This is also annotation from JPA. Okay, then we're going to create a getter and a setter for this owner. Okay, done. Then let's go to wizard. So in wizard class, other than ID and a name, a wizard should have zero or more artifacts. Then how do we store zero or more artifacts for a wizard? The answer is we can use an ArrayList. Let's just call it artifacts. Also, we're going to create an instance of it. Otherwise, you'll get an MPE. As you can see, IntelliJ is not happy about this because we forgot to add annotation. Now this time, we're on the wizard end. So this is a one to many. At one to many. Because one wizard can have many artifacts. Just make sure that you do not confuse one to many and many to one. 
Of course, we should create getters and setters. Also, if you still remember what you have learned in Hibernate in my database class, you should know that when we define at one to many and at many to one, one side should give up maintaining this foreign key because finally Hibernate will use ORM, object relation mapping, to convert these objects into tables. So there will be a foreign key. And we want the many side because in this case, Wizard is the one side, and artifact is the many side. We want the many side to keep track of the foreign key. So in the one side here, we need to tell Hibernate we're going to let the many side maintain the foreign key. So here I'm going to type mapped by equal to the name of the private field in here, which is owner. Copy, and then we, this is the many side, right? then go to one side and paste here. Also, to make things easier, I also want to do cascading. Okay, I will explain what this cascading is later on. Cascade equal to cascade all. Okay, so briefly, it means if I save a wizard and all the artifacts associated with this wizard, will also be saved or persisted in database. So I do not have to save a wizard, then save an artifact. So that saves developer a lot of time. You don't have to do this, but here it's just a convenience. I will show some example of cascade later on. Next, think about this. If we're going to assign an artifact to a wizard, what should we do? Well, that's easy. Let's say we have this object artifact. That's called A1. And we're going to assign A1 to wizard1, that is W1. Okay, so let me show this. Right now, in our data initializer, we already have six artifacts, A1, A2, to A6. And there are three wizards, W1, W2, W3. So, if we're going to assign A1 to W1, what should we do? What you need to do is we're going to add A1 to W1's artifacts list. And also, we're going to set A1's owner to W1. So it's a really two-way assignment. So we're assigning wizard to an artifact. We're adding this artifact to this wizard's artifacts list. Next, let me show you an easier way to do it. Okay, so let's go to wizard and scroll down. Now remember, there is an artifacts, this is a list. It keeps track of the artifacts that belongs to the current wizard. Okay, so let's go all the way down here. Here, we're going to define two methods. One is add artifact to the current wizard. The other one is remove artifact from this wizard. So those are just helper functions. You don't really need them but having them can make your program look much cleaner. So this method receives an artifact. Let's call it artifact. So remember, we have to do two things. First, we have to set artifacts owner to the current wizard. Then we're going to add this artifact to the artifacts list. Okay, so first, set artifact owner. And that's easy artifact dot set owner and I'm going to pass this to it because this is pointing to the current instance of this type next we're going to add this artifact to this wizard so this dot artifact and this dot artifact refers to the artifact list of this current wizard dot add artifact okay now this time we set it up on both sides the one side and the many side all right so next we're going to do the same thing for remove
First, we're going to remove the owner of this artifact. So what we do is we're going to set owner to null because it's okay that an artifact does not have any owner. It is waiting to be assigned. Next, we're going to remove this artifact from artifacts, which is the list of the current wizard. So this dot artifacts dot remove. Now, of course, to make it more robust, before we remove, you have to verify if it is there or not. Here, to save time, I just write remove artifact. Okay, next, let's go to data initializer and do some assignment. Okay, so we got six artifacts and three wizards. Okay. Also, I want to show you what I mean by cascading, remember? So first, let me delete this. Now, right now, we save A1, A2, you know, save them one by one artifact, and then we save wizard one by one. But I will show you that using cascade, we can just do one save, and everything will be saved cascadingly. Okay, so we're not going to save those artifacts explicitly. We only save the three wizard, okay? And then by saving those wizards, the artifacts associated with each wizard will also get persisted cascadingly. So that's the beauty of using Hibernate. You save once, but actually many things got saved or persisted. Okay, so let's do this. Now, if I remember correctly from Harry Potter, Deluminator and Elder Wand belong to Albus, the headmaster, Dumbledore. Invisible Cloak and Marauder's Map belong to Harry Potter. And the sword belongs to Neville Longbottom. And for now, we're not going to assign any owner for Resurrection Stone. Okay, so let's do it. So w1 dot add artifact a1 and a3. And for Harry, w2 dot add artifact a2 and a4. And for Navio, w3 dot add artifact a5. Okay. All right. Then we can save w1, save w2, save w3. And a1, a3 will be saved together with w1. A2, A4 will be saved with W2. A5 will be saved with W3 because we have this cascade. Okay, so I show you here. Because we have this. If you don't have it, you have to save those artifacts one by one. All right, remember, since the last artifact, uh, Resurrection Stone, doesn't have any owner, so we have to explicitly save it. Here's some comments. All right, so then let's test. So when we launch this application, we should see uh, artifacts, wizards, and their relation in H2 database. Okay. So let me run it. As you can see, it's starting. Okay, so Tomcat started at port 8080. Also, if you look at here, H2 console available at localhost 8080 forward slash H2 console. Okay, so let's go to Chrome. localhost 8080 connect right now you can see there are two tables one is wizard one is artifact so let's see what is in artifact okay as you can see 
one more column is added to this artifact table, and this one is the foreign key. So owner is one, one, two, two, and three. The last one is null. And we know that this is the foreign key that connects this table with the wizard table. Okay, this is a many, and if I delete this, this is the one. Okay, so we have successfully implemented that one-to-many UML class diagram. Okay, so let me go back. Next, let's go to implement API. So our goal is the client can specify assign this guy here, Resurrection Stone, to Harry as well. Because right now, this artifact doesn't have any owner. Then let's go to Swagger. This one here. Based on API, this is a put request. And in the endpoint, we need to include two path variables, wizard ID and artifact ID. Okay, then if everything is good, here is the response from the server. True, 200, assignment, success. Okay, let's go to IntelliJ. Let me close this. Let's start from controller. Now, this is the controller of wizard. All right, so here we're going to add a new method. And this time is at put mapping. And the first path variable is wizard ID, then followed by the second path variable, artifact ID. Okay. Here, there is an annotation wizards. So all those uh, endpoints will have this as prefix. Okay, that's why I didn't include forward slash wizards. Okay, so public result assign artifact. Okay, so we copy this, paste here, and then paste again, but this time is artifact ID. All right, also here it should be string, okay? Because the type of artifact ID is string and the type of wizard ID is integer. All right. Uh, next, controller is going to call service, right? So, so this is the wizard service dot assign artifact. Then we're going to pass the two path variables to it. Well, right now I'm calling a method that doesn't exist yet. And then we're going to return new result true. Artifact assignment success. Okay, so we're done with the controller. Then let's create this method in service. Okay, all right. Then how do we assign artifact with ID, artifact ID to a wizard with ID, wizard ID? Well, first of all, we have to query them. We have to get the two objects from database and then we can use wizard dot add artifact, right? Okay, so first we're going to find this artifact by ID from our database. Okay, so here's how to do it. Uh, okay, artifact do. Now we don't have artifact do yet, so let's go up and inject this artifact do here. Private artifact do. Okay, of course we have to use uh, this uh, constructor. So let me delete and recreate this constructor. So we're injecting two DAOs into this service, all right? Okay, so artifact DAO dot find by ID. Okay, 
So this is the artifact, let me just say artifact to be assigned. Okay. All right, next, let's query this uh, wizard with wizard ID. Okay, so wizard do dot, same thing, find by ID dot get. Okay, so this wizard will get this artifact. All right, next, let's do the assignment. Well, please note that it is possible that artifact to be assigned, that this one we just queried from database, already has an owner. So what we should do is we should first remove this artifact from the old owner and then add it to the new owner, which is wizard. Okay, so if artifact to be assigned dot get owner is not null. If this is true, so we're sorry to that wizard. We're going to say artifact dot get owner dot remove. Remember, we have a remove artifact. Okay, then uh, we can assign it to the new wizard. Wizard dot add artifact. Okay, so here I hope you can understand this logic here, right? All right, we're done. Then let's go to controller and see why it's complaining. All right, good, it's not complete now. All right, semicolon. Uh, so let's test. Okay, so no complaints here. All right, let's go to H2. Connect. All right, artifact. Now, as you see, the last one doesn't have any owner here, right? So let me copy this uh, ID. Let's say assign it to Harry, okay? Uh, owner with ID 2. Okay, so let's go to Postman and create a new request. So let's call this assign an artifact to a wizard. Okay, it belongs to this collection. Save. All right, this is a put. Remember, put means update, right? Because we are really updating the information of artifact and wizard. Okay, so localhost is one under wizard. Okay. The first path variable is wizard ID, and Harry's wizard ID is two, then followed by artifact ID. Remember, this is the artifact ID of resurrection stone. Okay, all right. Then let's click send. All right. So artifact assignment successful. Let's go to H two. Now, right now it's null. So let me run a game. Now this time it has an owner ID. It's two. Okay, so now Harry has three artifacts. There is a small issue here. Okay, after we add wizard in artifact and after we add artifact in wizard class. So let me show you. So right now I'm using this uh, get request, localhost 8080 wizards. I'm trying to find all wizards. Okay, now if I click send, remember previously we just saw three wizards. Each one has ID and name, that's it. But this time, since each wizard has a list of artifacts, if I click send, what will be returned from the server? You would say, of course, we're going to also show a list of artifacts. So let's take a look. If I click send, wow, I got a lot of stuff, all right? And Postman is trying to format it, as you can see here. Uh, find all success. Now, ID1, uh, this is Albus, uh, the first artifact. Okay. And then, look at here. The first artifact shows its owner, which is Albus. And then Albus, again, shows artifacts. I keep going. Then here we have Albus again. And here we have artifacts again. 
and keep going. Deluminator, Artifact, Albus, Albus, and keep going. Okay, so it's kind of like recursive, right? Um, and this definitely is not the, the result we expect. And if you go to server side, there will be some exceptions. Let's go to IntelliJ. Okay, as you can see, now we've got arrows here. This is not a good sign, right? If I scroll up, as you can see, those are all arrows or exceptions thrown by Jackson. Okay, some problem happened when we tried to serialize the result into JSON. Okay, so what is the name of this arrow? And I'm pretty sure that you guys will see this over and over when you go to work. Okay, uh, it's very long. Okay. Okay, so finally I scrolled up to the top. Okay, it says Stack Overflow Arrow. Okay, now of course, because this is a really a recursive algorithm. Now remember what we saw here. Here, let me show what the problem is. Please be careful. I want to show a list of wizards. No problem. I can print a list of wizards. But remember, each wizard has artifacts. So we're going to print all the artifacts. No problem. So for example, we print Deluminator. But remember, an artifact also have an owner. In this case, it's Albus again. And in order to print Albus, we have to print the artifacts again. And artifacts also include Deluminator. So we're going to keep getting into this artifact wizard, artifact wizard loop, and there's no end. So that is causing stack overflow. Then how to avoid this? So let's go to IntelliJ. And we're going to modify the two classes. Artifact. So that means we do not want this owner to be serialized by Jackson. So what we can do is we can use at JSON ignore. That means when Jackson is trying to uh, serialize an artifact, it will ignore this owner. Now, similarly, let's go to wizard. Let's also ignore this list. Okay, so the list is still there in the object, but when Jackson is trying to serialize your result and send it back to the front end, the list won't be serialized and won't be sent. Okay, so let me refresh. And go to Postman. At this time, if I do send, okay, and this time I'll only get ID and name. So I will no longer get a list of artifacts. Okay, so I hope you know how to use at JSON ignore. Next, let's commit and push our branch to remote. First, I'm going to add it to staging area and then commit. And here is the message. Artifact assignment done. Close the third issue. All right, then git push. And I'm gonna copy this. Right. Then let's go to GitHub. As you can see here, it is committed less than a minute ago. And we can compare and pull request. Merge pull request. Now remember, technically speaking, I should not be the person that merge my own pull request. You should really assign it to one or two reviewers and have your colleague review your code. And once they're okay, and the person, the admin person of this GitHub repository can finally merge it, okay? Merge it to the master. And also, as you can see here, it is also recommended to have a CI, continuous integration. And for now, uh, I haven't done this, okay? Uh, but it's a merge pull request. Okay, it is merged, and optionally, you can delete branch, but I will leave it there. Okay, so let's take a look at issues. And right now, we have three closed and two still open. So next, we're going to work on number four and number five. 
Well, since number four, users, is very similar to the first three issues, so I will do it offline. Okay, then let's come back to IntelliJ and let's switch back to master and make sure we're in sync with the remote master, okay, git pool. Okay, so now our master branch has the latest version of the software. 